Hi, I'm Femi OK. And I'm Malika Bilal, and you're in the stream on Al Jazeera and on YouTube. Today, Hungary's right-wing nationalist prime minister and his ruling party are savouring a third consecutive election victory. We examine what that means for the country. Viktor Orban and his Fidesz party has capitalized on an anti-immigration platform to once again sweep aside an opposition that had dared to dream things would be different this time. Now, with the liberal opposition fractured and uncertain, Fidesz played up a virulently anti-migrant narrative that's unsettled other EU member states. Here's just one example of the attitudes that came to dominate Fidesz's campaign. In this clip, Orbán's chief of staff, Janos Lazar, criticizes immigration into the Austrian capital, Vienna. És hogy előttünk, magyar városi polgárok előtt milyen jövő áll ebből a szempontból. Ha beengedjük őket, és uh, itt fognak élni a mi városainkban, akkor ennek is bűnözés, szegényedés, hossz piszok és lehetetlen városi körülmények lesznek a következményei. Ha bejönnek, ez a folyamat megállíthatatlan. The early results suggest that Fidesz took two-thirds of parliamentary seats. That's enough to allow constitutional changes. Al Jazeera's Jonah Hull is in Budapest and has more on Oban's win. It was, in fact, a testament to his own policies, to economic policies that have seen big rises in average wages here in the last eight years, also to his changes of the constitution, to the electoral law that has made it harder for small, divided opposition parties to challenge the big ones. And there are fears he may be about to go further, moving on the voices of opposition with new laws targeting NGOs and civil society, fears even that he may move to threaten the independence of the judiciary. So what happens to Hungary now? For more on this, we're joined from Budapest by Lily Bayer. She's a journalist at Politico Europe. Sibol Tivirus is a journalist at the Hungarian conservative weekly magazine Heti Valas. He's also in Budapest. And Gabor Toka is also in the Hungarian capital. He is a political science professor at Central European University and also an activist with the grassroots common country movement. Hello, everybody. It's good to have you here. So, Femi, we got so many comments uh -huh. from people online about this, and they range mm -hmm. from people saying, I'm ecstatic, to people saying, I am ashamed about the election outcome. This is Steve Valentine. He's one of the ecstatic people. He says, I'm in Hungary. This is great news for Hungary and for Europe. So relieved that Orban has remained. Our freedom, our rights, and our culture have been preserved. On the other side of that spectrum, Valentier says, it's confirmed. At least every second adult in my country is a straight-up fascist. I could not be more ashamed. Every second Hungarian adult believes that asylum seekers are the animals that Fidesz portrays them as. Sabolch, so, seeing those two viewpoints there, how much did the anti-immigrant sentiment that Belen here on Twitter talks about play into this election result, in your view? Well, I would say quite. This was, uh, if not the only one, but certainly one of the most... Uh, most important talking points of the government during the whole campaign. It was very heated, it was very outspoken, it was uh, partly untrue, I would say, but certainly it touched upon the, let's say, um, dark side or the shady side of the Hungarian soil. So, Baj, can you spell that out? You see, there's a couple of euphemisms there. Um, heated, uh, dark side, unpack it for us. What were you hearing, what were you seeing in this campaign? Well, certainly, I, I haven't seen any campaigns like this uh, before uh, during my whole life uh, observing the Hungarian elections or referendum campaigns. This is really, really outspoken. The stakes were put really high, not just on the government side, but on the opposition. And, uh, well, the government, which has uh, much of the measures to use, uh, uh, use the media or use the uh, advertisement surfaces, just uh, just use this advantage and uh, certainly it worked well Lily, for them. Uh, I'm trying to drag this out of Sobolchi. Maybe you can help me out here. Uh, this is a billboard on my laptop here. And it says it's part of the government campaign leading up to uh, the uh, vote ha that happened over the weekend. It says on, on this billboard, the UN wants us to accept migrants on a continuous basis. Capital letters shouting, Hungary decides not the UN. And then the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights says, this is just basically racism. Were you seeing that as you were reporting on this election? Lily. Well, I think that uh, Prime Minister Orban for the past two years has adopted a political strategy where he always feels like he needs 
to have an external enemy. So he used to have a billboard campaign called Stop Brussels. Then he had one called Stop Soros. And then he had one against the United Nations. It's essentially the exact same formula over and over again. And the idea is to convince Hungarian voters that there are nefarious forces outside the country that want to undermine Hungarian national interests and who don't have Hungarian's best interests at heart, and that, therefore, Prime Minister Orban and his party need to fight these external interests on behalf of Hungarians, and therefore Hungarians need to vote for them. Mm. I'm just wondering, Professor, what the mood is like in Hungary right now. Earlier today, we spoke to some Hungarians on the street to see how they felt about the election results. Have a listen to this. I'm interested in your take. If the country has decided, you have to accept it. If the election system is set up so that you can get two-thirds of the majority with just 49 percent of the votes, what can you do with it at the moment? This is what should have happened. We are happy with it because we are not really interested in immigrants. And that's what was at stake now. Well, the government has successfully implemented its hate campaign. They planted hatred in people's hearts, which is very sad. Professor, that just gives us a tiny sample of just a couple of people on yeah. the street. But if you could describe the atmosphere in Hungary today, what would you say? Well, I guess the government signs uh, is jubilant uh, that they have uh, regained their ability to ch change any law at their will without consulting anyone. Uh, the country has a unicameral parliament uh, and uh, uh, that uh, where a two-thirds majority uh, um, can can change any law, can uh, basically replace any public official uh, or discontinue the office of that official. So it's a, a fairly unprecedented degree of power given to a chamber which is not elected in a proportional way. I'm not aware of any uh, established democracy in the world, probably with the exception of Barbados, that uh, would have such a system that... Uh, uh, such a, a vastly majoritarian and accurate system can produce uh, uh, from a 49 percent of mm. the popular vote a majority that is capable of uh, altering any law in the country. So partly for this reason, of course, the election was very heated. Uh, uh, tensions run high. And as you can see, uh, one side is jubilant. The other side has doubts about the integrity of the electoral process. Uh, has doubts about uh, the credibility of an election result where there was no debate between the uh, two sides at all, where one side had uh, extremely limited media access, uh, while the government side they changed regulations even during the campaign in arguably unconstitutional ways at points. Uh, uh, they limited the administrative the ability of the opposition to use posters during the campaign. The, uh, the Opposition has basically no access via the media to 60, 70 percent of the population because they consume uh, their news entirely from sources that are owned by uh, oligarchs closely connected to the government or from the state television and state radio uh -huh. channel, which were turned into five propaganda channels. Say that again, Sabach. Yes, if I could just add something. So, uh, what the professor said is, uh, well, Largely true, I would just uh, like to mention that uh, the clip that was just uh, played was uh, shot in Budapest, and certainly there were the critical voice in majority, but if you look on the countryside, the division between the capital and the countryside couldn't be uh, more uh, obvious than it was now. Let's just uh, allow me to mention that the 88 uh, seats that were decided on the countryside, 85 of them were, uh, were gone to Fidesz. Uh, and it's true that in the capital, two-thirds of the seats from the 18 uh, parliamentary seats uh, were taken by the opposition. Uh, more could be taken uh, according to their, um, their critical voice towards each other, which was uh, really outspoken today. So this is the opinion of the citizens of the capital. But if you go to the countryside, uh, it's quite loud and clear. Mm. So, Bolcham, I'm glad you raised that because we got these couple of tweets from Tamas. 
He says similar to international trends, Hungary is now divided into a left-wing progressive capital city and a populist right conservative countryside. Orban's anti-migrant rhetoric is a huge success, quote unquote, in villages, but not in Budapest. But he goes on to raise a point that the professor just raised. He says the access to unbiased and non-governmental information and news is very limited in the countryside. Lily, I'm wondering if you can pick up on that point and, and how people are getting um, their news and their headlines about this party? Um, access to information is a huge problem here. So I, I think that, uh, that the Twitter user was correct in that in the countryside, uh, a lot of people, especially older voters in small towns and villages, rely heavily on media that is completely filtered by the government. So oligarchs close to Prime Minister Orban own 100% of all regional print newspapers. And on election day, I went out to one provincial town, not too far from Budapest, and I walked into a coffee shop and I looked at the stack of newspapers there, and every single one of them was owned by an oligarch close to the government that did not have any articles regarding alleged corruption by government officials or anything else that was critical of a government policy. And yet, I should add that when I went to talk to voters, in that same town as they were leaving polling places, they were not all Fidesz voters. Most of them were. And most of them said, yes, the government is right. And what we read in the paper is right. Migration is the number one issue. But some of them more quietly did say that they take issue with Fidesz, um, that they see the Fidesz oligarchs' domination of parts of the economy and corrupt practices. They see it firsthand. Some of them, in fact, work for companies that are owned by these oligarchs, and that, um, as a result, even though they don't feel very free to express their opinion in these small towns, they do disagree with the majority. So, Balch, I found this on your Twitter feed, and it's a, a tweet about you being happy to have participated at the election in Hungary amid a record turnout, smiley face, Hungary national flag there. Now that you look at this incredible victory again for the third time what is possible what can Fidesz actually do well the short answer is basically everything mm. uh, the smiley face was uh, was uh, attached to my feeling that uh, that my compatriots were really going in a record number I would say since 1990 uh, so it's around 70% uh, of turnout so the smiley face went to it and, um, well, many commentators, uh, influencers, or uh, political scientists raise the issue that the higher turns out, turnout um, favors the opposition. Well, uh, it was just totally the contrary, because the mobilization campaign in the last days by Fidesz was a stunning success. Uh, let me just mention that um, it was quite a proverb, if I may, that uh, Fidesz has only two or 2.2 million voters. This is their base, which couldn't be enlarged. Well, according to the final results, the water, the waters are about exactly 2.5 million. So uh, this is really something uh, no one uh, could have uh, expected. Milika? You know, we got this tweet here from Steve Valentine, who says, you can never please everyone. You need to look at the stats of Hungary since being run by Orban. Wages and pensions are up. GDP is up. Unemployment is down. Utility bills are down. The stats show Orban delivers. It's as simple as that. We're very happy, hence the landslide victory. Lily, there are clearly people who feel as Steve does. Can you talk to us about some of the successes, perhaps, of the party? Yes, so the party indeed does appeal to a lot of people, especially pensioners, um, who have uh, very small pensions um, and um, grew up under communism um, and now feel like perhaps they were not winners um, of tra the transition to capitalism. Uh, when I go to uh, the ruling party's town halls, when politicians go to talk to these core FIDES voters, most of the time, they are over 95% pensioners who come to listen to Fidesz politicians and sit there enthusiastically and clap. And the reason is that they're the biggest beneficiaries of these, um, these programs, the, the pension raises, the utility bill cuts, um, 
they really enjoy that. And they also like the fact that Orban provides a semblance of stability. Um, they don't like change very much. So they like the message that we don't want outsiders in Hungary. Everything will stay the same. Our population will stay the same. And um, we will continue as we always were. Mm -hmm. But I should say that um, not all Hungarians share this view. In fact, hundreds of thousands of Hungarians have moved to Western Europe. And if you go to London, London, I believe, is the second largest Hungarian city, perhaps by population. There are simply so many Hungarians living there. Actually, Lee, I, I was just thinking as I was scrolling through your Twitter feed just to see how you've been reporting on this, you've also been reporting some of the protests that have been happening, the uh, anti orban protests, and I'm just looking through some of those stories right now. Professor, I'm just wondering about the opposition right now. Uh, Jonah Hole, when he was doing our update about how the election result turned out, panned out, he said that some people are fearful. Are you one of those people? No, oh, I'm not fearful. I have nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but returning to, uh, uh, for a second to what uh, Lily was discussing, so it is indeed true that uh, 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 Hungarians are very optimistic by their own standards about economic conditions right now and about in the future. The international economic environment uh, is extremely favorable for government popularity. Uh, Hungary is a very open economy, has a very open economy. It's not a very large country, so uh, what happens in the Hungarian economy is largely dependent on European economic trends, which are currently extremely favorable. About four or five percent of the GDP are coming in from EU funds every year, uh, so that's uh, a straight addition to uh, you know the spending power basically of the government uh, who, that monopolizes access to these funds uh, and distributes it in a targeted way among its. Uh, 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 um, uh, clients. So, uh, so indeed, there are loads of reasons to feel good in the country right now. Whether those have anything to do with government mm. policies is disputed, and I don't want to answer this because it's a very complex uh, 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 debate going sure. about the uh, merits of uh, government economic policies, and uh, I think those economists are extremely negative about uh, the long-term impact of those policies. Uh, but, but the interesting thing, I think, is that in spite of this uh, uh, optimism and in spite of the uh, widespread support, probably not for races, but uh, for the uh, staunch anti-immigration platform of the government uh, among uh, people, mm. which is undeniable, uh, there, were, there were so many people who were so desperate to get rid of this government because they see corruption, they see abuses of power, they are concerned about the fate of democracy. Mm. They are opposing uh, the foreign policy of the government. Professor, let me just stop you. Let me just pause, uh, pause you for a moment, I, Professor, mm -hmm. just because you, you're talking about uh, uh, corruption, and, and we've actually got some statistics to see how Hungary is dealing with corruption over the last couple of years. Let's have a look at how they compare to other OECD countries. And we're going to put up this graphic so people can actually see where we are. So over the last decade, uh, where ha where's Hungary moved in terms of fighting corruption? While the high-income OECD countries as a group have maintained a, a really solid reputation for control of corruption, Hungary has got progressively worse since 2006, and that's according to the World Bank. So amongst this happiness from some parts of Hungarian society that things are going very well, there's also issues like corruption. Um, that you have to deal with. So, Bolch, how, how do you uh, tally that with that sense of we like this government? Well, I think uh, what you were just showing, this corruption issue, is certainly uh, brought up in the past uh, weeks or months, uh, especially uh, because uh, some family members of the prime minister were involved, and this was a huge issue. Mm -hmm. But this is precisely what this anti-immigration or anti-George Soros campaign is about, to create noise, to create uh, a louder voice to suppress everything which is, uh, which is external to this issue. And certainly, if we look on the numbers, it was just, again, uh, a nice tactic. I wouldn't say it wasn't dirty, but for the government, it certainly worked out. 
And uh, let me just also mention that uh, what the tweet was about a few minutes ago, that there are uh, results, where there are certainly results. As the professor also added, it's, uh, it's not independent from the external uh, economic uh, environment. But uh, that's why much of the society uh, was wondering, why cannot you communicate your results if you have some? Why do you have to push this negative campaign uh, instead of uh, communicating something positive? Well, uh, that's a rhetorical question, which uh, was answered by the numbers yesterday. Mm. Thanks for that, Sabolch. We also got this question live on YouTube just now. Christopher Clipper says, so with Fidesz winning, will this election have some negative effects on the European Union? Lily? I think we can expect a lot more conflict between Budapest and Brussels over the coming years. Uh, Hungary is already facing an investigation over uh, the rule of law. Actually, um, the draft of the European Parliament's report will be presented this week, and it's possible that they will recommend triggering sanctions against Hungary over rule of law issues. Um, Hungary has also been in trouble with the European Union um, over its refusal to participate in the refugee quota scheme, um, as well as um, a range of other issues. And I think that as Orban continues to consolidate power, and now with his strong position, we can expect him to consolidate power further, uh, he will be running into more and more trouble in Brussels. But at the same time, he does not want to leave the European Union. As everyone has mentioned, he gets a lot of money from Europe and Hungary's economy cannot survive without this flow of funding. I'm just wondering about the minorities who are in Hungary right now and they see the election results. And, and as Malika started off the program, she, she talked about people being embarrassed and then people being also very happy with the election results. What about the minorities, Professor? What happens to them? Are you seeing any backlash? Uh, you mean a backlash against uh, the opposition? Or yes. Or yeah, and, and how are minorities uh, faring? The, 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 if there's this anti uh, at minorities yeah. in Hungary or mm -hmm. something like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, it's less than 24 hours after the election results became known, and uh, so far I was busy uh, with observing other things, so I, I, I'm not aware of any immediate uh, uh, crackdown uh, on opposition members, or, or but but certainly there is a plan to pass legislation which would uh, um, controversially limit uh, the opportunities uh, for uh, uh, civil society organizations to operate in Hungary. Uh, it will uh, put a considerable reporting burden on them, create a, uh, a means for the government to interfere with their operations, uh, would uh, uh, stigmatize them as foreign agents in some circumstances. So uh, their, that legislation was already prepared. Uh, it was confirmed already today that it will be passed uh, with urgency uh, now that the government has the uh, qualified majority in parliament that mm -hmm. is necessary to pass the legislation in its original form. So, yes, I mean, we can be absolutely certain that we, there will be some uh, crackdown on uh, civil society and pro possibly also on courts. There was a previous plan. Uh, which was shielded for a while, and uh, surely it will be sure. now uh, uh, taken back to the agenda to pack courts with uh, with uh, 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 legal specialists who don't have, under the current rules, sufficient qualification to be judges, but uh, who served uh, under in uh, the civil service under the Orban government. Okay. And those people would now be parachuted into courts and presumably, and that's at least the fear, mm. uh, uh, active partisan ways in uh, okay. controversial court cases where, that the government kept losing so far because of the independence of the court. All right. Professor, thank you for your take, and Sabolch, and also Lily as well. I just want to head back into our community and see how they're reacting to the elections and this conversation. Although we heard some enthusiasm from some people, I'll read this from Limerack, who says, extreme disappointment. I should have seen it coming. Hungary's constitution has been ruined over time through the two-thirds majority they have, and even losing wouldn't fix the damage. As of yesterday, I have no hope for this opposition.
Our conversation continues always online. Hashtag AJStream. See you there. Thanks for watching.